I know a lot of people my age um, will leave. We'll, we'll leave Gibraltar. But are they Gibraltarians? Or Gibraltarians, are... yeah. And so, yeah, let me make that distinction. With my business, we're very fortunate that a lot of our employees are locals. Um, you know, they live locally. Um, or they live across in Spain. Um, and obviously, with a hard border, um, they're not going to be able to cross the border. The proposition of a hard border, in my view, and I, I, I agree entirely with what Thomas said, there will be a brain drain. Yeah. If there's a hard border. I absolutely fundamentally believe yeah. that to be the case. Five. But the reality is younger people feel as much as British European. Uh, and that is a real, real problem for me. Uh, and I see it amongst young people and they tell me exactly the same thing that Thomas has said uh, this evening. Uh, and I think we should properly consider that when we're making decisions yeah. about our future. But I think business owners in Gibraltar are hesitant to acknowledge the fact that they do not have the economies or the buying power that a large Spanish firm may have. So if, for example, Zara sets up shop inside, then how do you compete with that price point, right? Or in the construction equipment or construction material uh, yeah. space, how do you compete with a large firm that is supplying to a large economy on the other side and now capable of su supplying it into Gibraltar as well, right? Also, I believe the treaty is for about four years, Yeah. right? So for a business to set up shop to reduce its costs across the border and to depreciate those assets in four years is a bit of a challenge. I think the, the four-year element is very challenging because if there's an agreement that comes in which results in a free-flowing border, particularly for um, a free-flowing commercial border, um, that presents real challenges for the competitive edge of Gibraltar businesses. We might see... Some businesses tempted to leave Gibraltar and a consequential reduction, say, for example, in the cost of warehousing or storage. Uh, we might see additional as competition. As a result of a Brexit deal? As a result of a deal, yeah. Um, we might see um, you know, additional competition in areas like distribution and so on, which make, might, might make life very difficult for Gibraltar-based businesses. Or, and they might be thinking about how can we uh, you know, achieve a more competitive edge? Can mm. we also um, access uh, facilities across the border? And sort of uh, can we change our business model? Um, obviously, the downside for Gibraltar with that is those businesses then become, in part at least, Spanish-based businesses. And then they have this huge uncertainty of four years when it might all come to an end. Mm. So can they even take that option? And so what does the reality look for, like for them in that short four-year gap? These are all the challenges that, that we may um, have the luck, if, you, if, if you're in favour of an agreement, uh, of, of having to deal with. Um, and perhaps we won't have to deal with them if there's, if there's not a negotiated outcome.